Today I'm going to show you some really cool things you can do with the warp tool. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we've got a really cool image we're editing from Sven, who's a contest winner last week. If you guys want your images edited on Flurn, just enter them in our contest. You could win Flurn Pro Tutorials and have them edited here by me. So that's uh, both pretty cool things to have. <laughs> we're going to be doing some really cool stuff today. What we've got going on is an image by Sven. I really like this image, but there are just a couple of things that I looked at and I was like, you know, maybe we could make it a little bit better in these couple ways. So I want to teach you guys how to look at your images on just a couple of things you can change very subtly to maybe draw the attention where you want it to and what you can do about those. So let's look at our image. Now, here's our image, and um, it's by Sven again. Let's just go ahead and full screen this out so you can see. Really, really cool image. I love the use of prop here. The shadow uh, falling on the background is just amazing. The location is great. The wardrobe, just really everything goes together, and I like it a lot. Now, in looking at an image like this, um, I do this with my own images. I do this with other images. Um, oftentimes, I'll look just kind of like at a broad level at something that either might like distra distract my eye or like take me away from where I'm supposed to be looking or just kind of like hide something I should be looking at. So let's talk about some of the things that I'm just kind of like notice right off the bat and uh, we're just going to highlight them out. So this is sort of the thing that I would do initially in editing an image. So I'll go through and kind of like circle some things out and then I'll go and fix those. So the first thing I see is I really like this, uh, the use of the bullhorn or whatever this is here. Um, but one thing I tell you that does bother me is this right here, this area right here. And the reason is because I have really nice definition of what's going on uh, from the horn up here. And I can see, you know, the shape and I, I know the horn and what it is. This right here, it, it just gets a little bit fuzzy. It, you know, it's just because the shadow in the background just happens to be joining up exactly right where the horn is. So I lose a lot of definition in there. And it doesn't seem like that sort of thing would be a big deal, but it's not like, I like the idea of it like, you know, shouting out through the shadow. And in this case, it's just not really there. Um, not a huge deal, but we are gonna fix that, or I don't know about the word fix, but we are gonna change it at least. And I think you guys will be able to see the difference that that'll make. Um, just another like quick thing. I like the use of, you know, the, the light here on the top as a compositional element and then, you know, dark here on the bottom. Just this little piece of uh, highlight here just kind of distracts my eye. This, the rock does a little bit as well, but I don't really mind the rock as much, but this little guy just kind of distract, distracts me. What I want to be looking at is right over here, obviously our subject and things like that. All right, and then we're going to do some really cool stuff with the warp tool, uh, giving her like a, a dress that's kind of like playing in the wind there, and uh, it'll help accent that um, the shape here. So we've got a, a cross shape here and a cross shape as well. So it's just going to help add to the composition of everything. All right, let's start off at the very top. So what do we do about something like this? Well, first of all, I want to be able to take care of my background. So I want to be able to take um, basically this line and bring it on down. And we have a couple ways to do that. I'm going to use the clone stamp tool. Now we're going to create a new layer. We're going to click on our clone stamps tool and be sure you're clicked on current and below. And that's going to sample everything that's on this layer and everything below it. So what I'm going to do is hold down the alt or the option key and sample right over here. And then I'm going to go right over here and see where I'm going to paint. Now, if you hold down the alt or the option key and hold shift at the same time, you'll get a little preview of what you're actually going to be clone stamping, which is really nice. So let's start in and I'm just going to start clone stamping in right over here. And I'm not really worried right now about being, you know, anywhere uh, near my horn. I, I don't care because I'm going to create a layer mask in just a little bit. That's going to wind up working out pretty well for this. All right. And that looks pretty, that looks pretty great already. It, it's just exactly what I want. Now, what we're going to do is figure out how to get this horn cut out. And I know a lot of you guys, some of the people who've been using Photoshop for a long time, and say, just use the pen tool. And that's fine, but a lot of people hate the pen tool. So I'm going to show you a different way to do it, not using the pen tool. And some of you guys are like, yes, not pen tool for the win. We're going to grab our marquee tool, and I'm going to grab this elliptical marquee because we've got a couple ellipses, right? We've got one that goes like this and another one that's going like that. So with our marquee tool, I'm going to create a marquee that looks about like the bell of our horn, whatever you want to call it. Now, when you make a selection just like that, just click and drag. Not too bad right there. You're going to want to right click in here and go to transform your selection. Now, I can transform just this selection around and fit it to where I want. I can bring my little point here in the middle. This is my transform point. Bring it off to the left and then I can rotate around just so we have that bell. If I want to make sure it's, you know, just the shape of the bell, 
There we go. We're already getting much closer. The, this part looks good, so let's go ahead and transform it down, down there. And there we go. We've got the shape of the bell there. So we're going to hit OK. And now we've got a selection that's right there in the shape of our bell. Just remember, like, kind of think about the front side and the back side of the bell. So on our new layer, what we're going to do is just going to fill this with white. So I'm going to hit Shift Delete, and we're going to fill this with white. It really doesn't matter what color we fill with. OK, we're going to hit Command D to deselect, and we're going to make this layer invisible temporarily. OK, so we've taken part care of one part of the bell. Now the next thing I want to do is take care of the other part of the bell, and that is going to be this line down here. So we're going to, again, use a marquee selection tool. I'm going to right click and go to transform selection. OK, we're going to bring this here and just kind of give it a rotation right about there. And the really nice thing about this is you don't have to get any of these things perfect uh, right off the bat, because you really can just uh, transform them, you know, kind of move them around any way you want to. Uh, after the fact. So it just kind of helps out quite a bit when you're actually figuring out, you know, okay, what's the shape that I want. Okay, so we've got this area that's kind of following along that line there. So I'm going to hit this checkbox. Now we're going to do the inverse because I don't really want to paint what's ever in here. We want to paint the horn, but I selected the outside of the horn because there's no like inverse <laughs> marquee tool, right? There's no inverse elliptical marquee tool. So not a big deal. We'll just turn this guy back on. We'll go to select and we'll go down to inverse. So now instead of being selected inside of this marquee, it's going to be selected outside. And we're just going to grab our brush tool and I'm going to paint with white. And there we go. We're just going to paint this area away. All right. And that's all we need to do. Let's deselect by hitting command D and we're good to go. So we've defined the shape of the bell right here uh, pretty easily. Just a couple marquee selection tools uh, using an invert to describe uh, to define the outside. So how do we actually use this? Well, we've got our layer here that's visible, and it's visible covering the bell, and we've got this. So I just need to figure out a way to turn this layer into a selection, and then make it hide on this layer. Not hard to do, really. Just command click right here on your layer thumbnail, and that's going to turn whatever's on your layer into a selection. OK? We'll make this invisible, and then here in my layer, we're just going to click on a layer mask. Now, it's the opposite of what we want. Not a big deal. Just click on your layer mask and hit command I. So what we've got now is really, really cool. We've defined the shape using a couple more keys. And then we've used that to define a layer mask now for the shape here. And you guys can see really clearly now, here's the before, where we kind of lose a little bit of that shape uh, in, the, in the shadow. I mean, you can just see it. And there's the after, where it really is kind of like screaming through. And we didn't have to make like the biggest change in the world. But even just that, it's like, wow, OK, now I can clearly define and see that. So if you, this will happen a lot in your photograph. Sometimes you'll have like, you know, like a pole sticking out of someone's head or you know, something that you really want to show. But maybe there's like you're, you're, you know, have like a dark object that's supposed to be the center of your image. But then right behind it, there's another dark object. Well, you can cut it out and move it around and things like that. So oftentimes, doing something like this is going to really help out in just making whatever you want to say a little bit more clear. Plus, you guys learn some cool ways to make selections and to uh, hide things. Let's go ahead and group those together. That's really cool. Now, on a new layer, this is actually pretty simple. What we're going to be doing is grab a clone stamp tool and just clone stamp from the top on down here. There we go. And kind of cover that up. Now, a cool technique that you guys can use as well, if you want to, with a clone stamp, if you change your layer blend mode from normal to something like darken, what it's going to do is it's not going to allow you to repeat necessarily the same thing. because. Um, Let's say if I clone stamp, oftentimes, um, <laughs> if you clone stamp everything, it's just going to uh, clone stamp the highlights and the shadows. But if you change it to like lighten or darken, it's going to change that. So it's only going to do one or the other. And you won't see a pattern that repeats as, as obviously. Um, to, for the best way to do that, make a stamp visible layer by hitting Shift, Option, Command, E. This is just kind of a bonus. You don't need to know this, but um, just thought I'd show you. So I'm going to hold down Alt or Option. And we can see I'm only darkening uh, what's going on here. But you can see, as soon as it gets to anywhere it might lighten, it's not going to start repeating, right? It's not, it's not showing anything up there. So I can do this and create like all kinds of really nice patterns. Like if I want just this shadow, but I want it over there, let's select that out and start painting it in there. And all of a sudden, that's what we've got over there. But I'm not, I'm not double painting anything. Um, there we go. It's just doing the dark. So if I want the top of this shadow right over there, well, I can do that. And as soon as it's going to start lightening something, it's just going to stop. So a cool way to use a clone stamp tool, um, in that case, it was darkening. But we can also use it with lightening. Let's just show you how that works. Lighten, I can 
grab that rock and just paint another rock over here. Obviously it's gonna paint a whole new rock because that's lighter, but if I wanted that information like up here, it's only gonna paint where it actually is going to lighten. It's not gonna start darkening anything out at all. Not as applicable floating in the middle of the air, but you get the idea, hopefully. All right, let's just delete that. I just wanted to show you that. All right, and the last thing what we're gonna do, I'm gonna make a new layer. We're gonna change this mode from uh, lighten back to normal. If you guys do change like a blending mode of your brush or your clone stamp tool and it starts to act all weird, just that's the first thing you should check is make sure that goes back to normal whenever you're done. It's a good habit to keep in just to change it back to normal. Okay, we're gonna use our clone stamp tool and on a new layer, what I'm gonna do is just clone stamp her dress. There we go, and her feet, everything like that. Very cool. So this is on a whole new layer and I can move it around and things like that, whatever I want to do. So what we're going to do is, is go ahead and start to warp this. So I'm going to bring it to an area I want. I'm going to hit Command T and we're going to right click and go to warp. Now if you guys have never used a warp tool before, it's very cool. Basically you can just grab each one of these, like you get nine squares and it's going to divide it up and you can click anywhere in here and just start warping things around. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is start to like warp around to make it look like the the dress is kind of like you know flowing in in the wind here and then push it around to her body as well all right now you can do this in a couple different steps don't feel like you got to get it perfect in the first step um usually i don't i'll get i'll warp it a little bit i'll hit enter and then warp it again so let's go ahead and hit enter and again i'm just like clicking here and moving these around there we go now we're getting a little bit of weird areas here where it's um you know covering the other dress and things like that um this, you might think, okay, now I gotta go in and layer mask it. Well, you actually don't really have to layer mask because just like we did earlier with the healing, with the clone stamp tool, this is why I wanted to show you guys this, is if you have an area that's light on dark or dark on light, and let's say like this dress is light, right? And I only want the light dress to show up. Well, instead of trying to like layer mask that out, all I'm gonna do is change the blend mode from normal to lighten. And anywhere where it's dark, it's just, now it's just not gonna show up. So that just did all my work for me, which is really, really nice. Um, I'm just gonna put a quick layer mask to like get rid of you know the shoes and, or the extra feet that we created down here. Um, but other than that, we have a dress that's gonna like really do a nice job blending in with the rest of the image, um, you know, creating all these cool highlights and things like that. And we don't have to layer mask it really that well at all. So if we wanna change it again, let's hit Command T again, right click, and now we can just continue to warp it um, you know, however we want. We can just, you know, you can go crazy with this, bring it out. It's gonna start to degrade eventually. It's gonna start to look horrible. Um, you can hit escape and just right click and try to warp it again. But, you know, something, something like this just kind of gives that dress just a little bit of movement. And um, there we go. Just that little bit of movement there. Let's hit command T right quick again. Just warp it one more time. Kind of bring this around. Something that we just want to make it look, you know, believable. There we go. And doing that sort of thing can really help out. All right. Very cool. And it duplicated our rocks back there as well. So we'll just put a layer mask on there. So you can see just by changing that blending mode, what it allowed us to do is uh, now we're, you know, not necessarily having to worry about masking it all that well because it kind of does that job for us. Um, so we have this kind of area that we talked about in in conjunction with the shadow line here. So let's just go ahead and group those. Uh, we'll show you guys the before and the after real quick. And um, I think you'll be able to see that um, they really do just kind of make an impact on, on the overall image. So here's the before um, and there's the after. So we just got rid of a little area here, kind of brought the dress out. That was mostly for fun. You don't have to do that stuff. But the bullhorn, although simple, uh, really does make a difference in in the overall image so just a kind of cool way to spot some things in an image and what to do to take care of them guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial thanks so much for watching and i will learn you later bye everyone my business card says aaron nace bullhorn redefiner